Hey yo, this is Marto, we're back. And we are beginning a battle with the Rock Solani, but we do not want this constant snow. I love the snow shader effect. This is awesome. Like, holy cow, I don't think I've ever seen it in a battle that I've fought. It's fantastic, but we don't want it. We take longer to recover from fatigue when idle. Yeah, well, we'd rather no snow. We have archers that we're depending on. Fog? Ooh, that's worse. Dry. That's what we want. Snow on the ground. As much as that snowy um, effect is very cool. Very cool. Let's see. Let's go for a simplex Accius. Triplex. No, we want simplex. And let's narrow it up some. Oh, why are you not? You know what? Let's go for a double X. Yeah, there we go. This is wonky. I don't know about that. Okay, now sometimes they sally forth. I really don't care which way they do it, to be honest. They're armored swordsmen. They're gen um, mercenaries. Those will be somewhat tough. Everything else is mostly garbage. The step nobles, those could be problematic. The light cap could be problematic if I let them flank me. Yeah, let's just go ahead and get started. So what are they gonna do? Are they gonna... Sally? Let's just give them a second to decide. They're gonna trample their own tents. Okay, so they're not gonna sally. Luckily the towers are not the absolute nightmare they are. Um, Attila. We can move up closer with Ad moving into firing range. We're relying on these auxiliary Germanic hunters to do do work for us. I'm like truly, really hoping that they come through. The war dogs might also end up being kind of important too. They're very good against light infantry, and they might be okay against cav, just because I don't really have any better options against cav, to be honest. Yeah, so let's take our war dogs and move them in here for now. No, no, over here. Let's take our archers and move them straight up front. Yeah, I know. Now the question is, what kind of damage can we do? We could try to do fire damage against the arrow towers, but it's probably not going to be very effective. Wow, already they've taken out. You know what? Let's just go ahead. Are they going to sally? They, they outrange the towers. That is perfect. And they are getting kills. Step Warriors, Medium Melee. Yeah, I know it is. Let's move up just a little bit and set them on Skirmish. We're we'll going to take some arrow fire, but I don't think it's going to be all that bad. Be nice if we could see the general, if we could range the general. I don't think, yeah, that's unlikely. Move them back. Three hundred kills there. I'm about to move the archers back. Okay. 
Well, we've whittled them down in between all of that. We've gotten what? Like, there's 300 plus, four, five hundred, six, almost 700 kills. Yeah, that was worthwhile. Now, they don't have any pikes. Our infantry should be able to cut through them, frankly, pretty easily. Let's just move in with our auxiliary, which will take losses from the towers, but that's okay. They're easily replaced, the levies. They don't have a great charge bonus, but they fight okay and they defend okay. Definitely more of a defensive unit, but not bad. And our root legionaries are pretty indispensable right now, early game. If we lose them, we're in rough shape. Where is Aurelius himself? The man. There he is. The man we must protect at all costs, the savior of the empire. We've only lost like three legionary units so far. They're not going to, uh, yeah, they did use their darts, Plumbata, I believe. Okay, actually kind of surprised. Let's go ahead and mosh pit the center here. I'm going to go ahead and come around with the dogs. Maybe come around with another couple auxilia that we may not actually use on the flank. We may not need to. The crush from our levies may be enough, to be honest, because I, while I do expect to take pretty heavy losses, I also expect to do pretty decent damage. Those are awesome models on the summation light cap. I don't think I've seen those. That's very cool. I'd be curious to see the historical influence there. Very, very cool though. I, like I said, I've not spent a lot of time with this campaign. I've spent a little bit, not a lot. War dogs eat ranged units alive. That would be perfect. Let's go ahead and move them around too. losses aren't too bad. Damage isn't too great, but it's not terrible. And you can see these are relatively low armor units, at least for Rome. Some mix of armor shields, all have helmets. This would be probably true of levies who couldn't afford much on their own. What do they got? They got nothing. That's a bug. <laughs> I don't think the uh, Sarmatian defensive camp should have Two beautiful Aurelian Roman flags with legionary shields. But what do I know? Okay, war dogs. I want y'all to attack there. And I want y'all to attack the cavalry, the horse archers, because I don't want to sit there. And they engage very quickly. And like I said, they usually eat light infantry, literally, uh, for dinner. No testudo for the levies, they're lightly trained. We have our first force starting to break over there in the melee. Taking heavy losses, but levies can easily be re recruited and replenished. And here are the war dogs come to wreck them and give them a bad day. 83, 81, 80, 79. See our war dogs here 13 and 5 kills. 76. And the thing is, they'll just continue fighting. I don't have control over them anymore. They no longer follow orders in that sense. If I sit here and do this, the dogs aren't going to move, just the soldiers. The dogs are kind of... Uh, but they're going to continue to fight. Horse archers routing 
see, over almost 100 kills. Would I prefer to move some cabin, take out the archers, and um, then use the cav to flank? Absolutely. But you know what? The war dogs actually kind of disappointed to see that um, these dogs aren't killing because these dogs are chasing. What is up with y'all? A little pacifistic there, puppies. <clears throat> yeah, just turn your back to the tower. That's perfect. The crush continues. We have some slight. And do we have anything we could do with Aurelian? He can inspire, so moving him up for that would be a good idea. As long as the towers continue to focus on the swords and don't turn their attention. And here's where we're going to wreck. If we can get a good flank on the general. Oh, nope, they... Okay, so we're going to give an inspire effect and we're going to back off. Because we don't want to lose Aurelian. That would be a complete disaster. He is the main man of this campaign. <clears throat> There we go. Good old flanking attack. If I had been smart, maybe would have taken out those archers and moved another round. But I'm not too worried about it. Here we go. Yeah, we are soon... We are soon to claim victory. Get a little more press because some of them uh, are strange. <laughs> yeah, right into the wall. Good job. So barbarians are numerous, and numbers give advantage in auto-resolve, although we were predicted to win this anyway. But where it matters is defensive battles in the battle. Decisive victory, absolutely. <clears throat> 400 losses to 1,800. I will take those numbers. War dogs did work. Archers did work. Even the levies were pretty solid. So like in the Republican period, Rome has pretty solid sword infantry. Yeah, we're going to enslave the Roxolani. Military tradition for Thacia. And again, early on, we're going to be running Aurelius all over the map. We're going to take formidable fighters for now, but probably auto resolve this. Yeah. 99%. The Emperor. Able night battles, increase ambush, night battles, anticipating enemy ambush and cunning. The only downside, we can't quite make it there. And we can't fortify. Well, might as well move in then. We'll take some winter attrition, but other than that. Let's see, we have 3,500 gold. We have no immediate border threats. <clears throat> we will have some eventually though. Let's go ahead and upgrade the armor on this legion. Lucius Martianus, Lucius Marcianus. If you're a classical Latin person, Lucius, he's a part of the Patricii Council. Um, protected from civil war, but you know we're in pretty good, pretty good position. You know what? Here's something we could do. Our income's gone down in Thessalonica. Interesting. We talked about getting. Patrician, I think that'd be a good idea. 
tax rate and culture conversion. And I believe they eventually have an upgrade that'll um, increase loyalty with a controlling faction, which, yeah, is still the Patricii Council. So that'll be good. The very perfectissimi now control Africa. That's a little disconcerting. Losing Africa in a civil war would be a major, major blow. We're good on food. We use more wealth. Trade goods would help. 111 would not improve our garrison. <clears throat> Still, economy is going to be everything. Thessalonica. We don't have any growth for any industry. A harbor, we're just going to lose this one food. It costs all our um, income. But you know what, I think we're in a good position. As good as we can be, all things considered. Militarizing as our Mizzikatuza with a good garrison will be solid for us. Again, Gallic Rome and the Pretenders are usually not a big concern. Subversion, Hidden Nation Exposed, Hidden Nation Exposed, Spy, Rank Up, Easter, Spy eventually, Mandrake will be super important, Five Line of Sight, Cunning Base, yes. Okay, who are this? The Buri, Buri. Marching down with a not insubstantial army. So, unfortunately, I've got to increase our garrison. He's going to take hold the walls. Can I get peace with Beery by any chance? Probably not. They don't seem fond of me. Yeah. If anything, the odds are the Roxolani are going to... Not the Roxolani, the Gothi are going to betray our peace eventually. Can we get any peace here? No. Marcomani. Yeah, diplomacy ain't working out for us. It's not giving us any benefits really so far. Nasimons. Can we get a non aggression at least? It wouldn't guarantee anything, but you know, it'd be nice. Boss Brew probably still won't trade with us. Not willing to give them money for it. Well, let's go ahead and take Picool. Just auto resolve that. Yeah, we kept our hounds. Occupy. The Imperium increased. We get another edict. Faction destroyed. What I really need is, unfortunately, another garrison. Another garrison. Let's give them a tricky eye council recruit. As much as I really can't afford it, I'm going to have to convert and. I don't want an auxiliary camp. I would like a legionary camp. I guess I can't afford that. Okay. And our hope is going to be that we're going to be able to garrison these two provinces sufficiently so we can turn our focus west and the Gallic Rome and the Roman pretenders. But no guarantee of that. We have very little money left. Are there any provinces that are having major issues? Achaia. Some public order issues, but not severe. Same with Illyricum. Both of them are positive on food. Raetia and Noricum, negative on food. It's going to kind of have to be that way for now. Wish the garrison was stronger on Tier 2. Or even Tier 3. It's kind of sad, actually. How weak the garrison really is. 
Aurelian walls. Civil herbs. Cohort, levies, vigilant skirmishers, slingers. Cohort, two legionaries. Two vigilants, two skirmishers, one slinger. Eh, it's okay. Yeah. Do I expand Araya? Not right now. Okay, so we're about to have some severe financial issues. We're going to have to... Oh, I can still issue an edict. Macedonia. Macedonia. We already have our tax harvesting. Dacia. I cannot issue edicts that I do not fully control. Tax harvesting. Thrace. We're going to issue tax harvesting. Ooh! Okay, here, I, that's what I want to build. I am going to get slums. That's unfortunate. So we're going to have to build up our infrastructure because we're about to have some severe, severe economic issues. <clears throat> God, the Buri. They're about to give me some severe headaches, too. Spy increase in rank. The man in the armor prologue. Lucius Aurelian. Rome is dying. These words I hear every day. Whenever we see the desolation of the barbarians sleep in their wake, someone whispers, Rome is dying. When we enter battle and rout the barbarians, there will be hushed hawks murmuring, still, Rome is dying. No more. Rome has been dying for as long as I remember. I saw its agony, the rot eating through it from within. No more. My soldiers have chosen me to be their emperor, and I will be the emperor worthy of their trust, Sol Invictus, Lord of Daylight. I offer neither sacrifice nor solemn oath. I am a man of empty promises. I am not a man of empty promises. That's a big slip. I ask only this. Watch over my wife and daughter, my legions, the people of Rome. For if its light goes out, what will become of you, of us? Forgotten shadows from past, drenched in gore. I, Lucius, Ar Lucius Aurelian, will not have this. So, I will turn west, knowing I may have to go and save Zarmizakatuza from the dread berserkers. It's a problem is they get some pretty strong 20 stacks, and they're going to be spamming them for some time. No slums. Maybe they remove slums and I just forgot. Piss school. I've got to increase my economy. Focusing in Thessalonica could really help. Would increase tax rate. Give Vigilas 200 wealth. It's the biggest bang for our buck. 100 wealth versus 40. Five food versus four. <laughs> That's it. I'm just out of money. That's. And here's where the campaign gets tough. It's just going to be a constant push and pull between the economy and the needs of my garrisons and trying to fend off the fact that I'm going to be attacked from all sides. Worst comes to worse, I abandon Africa. I just don't see how I can defend it and Greece and these regions at the same time. I think this wall settlement can hold. I think it can hold. I may have to increase this legion just so it can respond to enemies. But what I really need to be able to do is move this and start taking the wealthy lands in Italy. I don't know. We'll see. Join a war against Palmyra. I cannot afford to do a war in the east right now. 
historically, Aurelian, yep, here we go. A quincum is a real issue with the quadi. Okay, before we get involved in the next turn, I think we're going to put a cut in the video. So we will continue shortly.